when the family team model is kind of inverted, right? Where it's actually like, no, no, once they actually become adults and are going in later in life, then we're actually building a strong team. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another 5-Minute Fatherhood. So we got a question that I was asked recently. Should every father start his own business? Is it, is it for every single dad? Is it really a good idea for, for us to have and <laughs> own a family business? And a lot of people listen to, to me, to Jeff, to see our, you know, our lifestyles um, and others. Um, I know particularly for a lot of us in Cincinnati, a lot of dads have made this decision. And so um, this, is, this question comes up all the time. Do, do dads need to start their own business? Is that really what we're advocating for to be a family team? Okay. So <clears throat> I, w- I want to like answer it in two ways. Okay. First of all, the answer um, just really briefly is no, not every father should start their own business. Um, however, I do think it's a good idea to have a part of your long-term strategy, the acquisition of family-owned assets. That's the mm. distinction. You should, I'm not advocating every father yep. should start their own business. I am advocating that if you're if you've got 50 years ahead of you, you know, you're in your 20s or 30s, I am advocating that as a part of your long-term family provision strategy, you try to acquire some assets. Okay, that's the difference. Now, how do you acquire assets? There's a couple different ways you can do that. One is you can start your own business, right? And that's a really clear way a lot of people um, um, really build assets. I was having a great conversation with a friend of mine who was in his 30s, who's got a great corporate job. And he was asking, what do you think I should I quit? I mean, I really like my job. It's it's perfectly balanced with my family. I'm making, you know, good money, you know, and, and I was like, no, that's a great, that's, you know, and yeah. he was also making decisions to, to like, how do I invest this into assets? And I think the fastest way I can acquire assets for my family is to stay in my corporate job. I was like, stay in your corporate yeah. job. Like, that's a great reason. Yeah. Now, the, the reason why I think it's important, to, there's many reasons to start assets, you guys, but there's one that's unique to family teams I want to talk about, which is that I, I think it's important that you understand as a family team, um, you probably are going to need to have more flexible time on your hand in your 50s than you need to have in your 30s. And so the, I have seen this in so many families play out as they've gotten older. And, yeah. and that yeah, is it's that usually as the your kids get the older West, right? and your kids turn into teenagers, adults, they start to like invest in their, like families tend to start to blow apart in your late 40s and early 50s. And for more, yeah. most corporate jobs, the trajectory is that your your highest income producing value comes in your 50s. And so they also want mo- more of your time than ever. And they want it to yep. be less flexible than ever. And so like with my friend, he actually was saying, look, I want to make sure that in my late 40s, early 50s, I get out of this corporate job. And yeah. I, ha- But in order to do that, I got to save up a lot of money to get assets yes. so that I can make money through my assets in my 50s to be able to work with my kids, to work as a family team. And that doesn't mean you, you completely quit all jobs. Maybe he'll continue to have, and he's decided, and you yeah. know, he was telling me stories about how some dads decide to stay at a lower level in the corporate world so that they can do that in their and, and really work with in, in their kids and really spend more time together to, to really build that family yeah. um, together. But assets have an, a massive impact on whether or not families stay together generationally. I mean, it, it, yeah. an outsized impact. If you read the stories, they make a really big difference. And it takes time to acquire assets, you guys. It takes capital to acquire yeah. assets. And so it's important that you don't just uh, haphazardly move into that. But man, you got enough time. If you're in your 20s or 30s, you got 50 years, you can acquire some assets. You can get some real estate. You can get some capital intensive assets over time if you really uh, are thoughtful about how you're building your family's future. Um, there's a great podcast, by the way. A lot of us have recommended Abraham's Wallet, a bunch of friends of mine who have started that. They're really trying to coach dads how to figure this out um, because there's, this is, there's a much more complicated than we can answer in this one question. But the short answer is no, not every person, not every father needs to start his own business. But I do think as a part of that long-term uh, financial um, picture, you should have as part of that the desire to acquire some assets for the family team. But Jeff, how have you thought about this one? Yeah, I mean, I agree. And it's exactly what you said. Like, not only does does the corporate ladder usually demand more and more as you get into your 40s and 50s, but then also the American model of family then also becomes you kind of like feel like, oh, I can let my my kids, my kids are more yeah. and more sustainable so I can like release from them. When the family team model is kind of inverted, right? Where it's actually like, no, no, once they actually become adults and are going in later in life, then we're actually building a strong team. And we have kind of played people all over the world, you know, kind of like the Rothschild bank family when, you know, at that point when he had four adult sons, they yeah. were the global <laughs> empire of the bank. Um, uh, and so I think, 
And, and so to be able to do that and strategize and then to be in your 40s and 50s and be able to travel more to your kids, then I think, yeah, you have to kind of be building it towards there. And I agree. Like, I think sometimes we short circuit that. We think like, oh, I can't do that. I can't just start a business right now. I can't quit my job. And like you said, like, don't actually let the normal nine to five job bankroll your goal of your 50s, right? Let it actually be the thing that stabilizes you, that gives you that income and lets you do those things. Um, and even like, you know, for example, the real estate Burr method, which is like, uh, you know, instead of, it's like basically it's a BRR, yeah. which is, you know, buy rent or I think it's like buy, renovate and, and rent, um, which yeah. basically means it doesn't matter if a house goes up or down in value because your strategy for that is you're going to buy it, renovate it, and then rent it for 30 years. And as long as you have cash flow, that's all that matters. But if you start doing that method in your when you're 25, you will be actually out the door, house fully paid off, done, where it's literally just a s solid asset by 55. That's insane, right? Where then it's just generating full cash and you have the actual equity of the home that you can move around and give and take from. So stuff like that, it's just, the, it's a strategy, right? It's a strategy that you're kind of going there and you have to have this trajectory. And I think it's really, really important. And by the way, Jeff and I are not financial advisors. <laughs> That's why <laughs> yes. we have our friends at Abraham's Wallet. Um, and those guys are. Um, so you guys, if you want specific advice in your case, like please get an advisor and be talking to people who have really, really good, who see your picture. But every all the principles that Jeff just described and that I've been describing are super solid. Um, but yeah, get into the details with somebody who can really help you establish that plan and then stick with it and really get those assets over time.